Hey, it's Steph. Welcome back to my channel. Here on this channel, we are all about healing, growing, and glowing, and we prophesize this on our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today's video is something that the Lord helped me become aware of in my personal life and it is about emotional manipulation. Definition. Emotional manipulation occurs when a manipulative person seeks power over someone else and employs dishonest or exploitative strategies to gain it. Unlike people in healthy relationships which demonstrate reciprocity and cooperation, an emotional manipulation manipulator looks to use control or even victimize someone else. Now that we know the definition of what emotional manipulation is, we are going to be discussing in this video five signs that show you are dealing with an emotional manipulative person and how to deal biblically, spiritually. Okay, so let's get into it. Sign number one, emotional manipulators gaslight you. It is important to know that emotional manipulators are incredibly skilled liars and they use gaslighting to support their lies. Definition. Gaslighting is a form of psychological manipulation in which the abuser, or in this case the emotional manipulator, attempts to sow self-doubt and confusion in their victims' minds. So they insist that an incident didn't happen when it really did happen. And they insist on them saying something when they never really said it. It is an extremely powerful way they get out of trouble. Sign number two, their actions don't match their words. Like I remember so many conversations with so many friends back then all about questioning whether someone or not was this type of person when their actions never match their words. That is manipulation. Emotional manipulators will tell you exactly what you want to hear, but their actions reflect what they truly feel and what they truly want. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? For instance, they may pledge to support you, but when it comes down to having to actually support you, when it comes time to follow through, they will act as if your request is unreasonable again making you question your reality to mold your perception according to what is convenient to them okay okay sign number three they claim the role of the victim nothing is ever their fault it is always someone else's fault someone else made them do what they did if you get mad or upset it's your fault for having unreasonable expectations. If they get mad, it is your fault for upsetting them. Emotional manipulators do not take accountability for anything. Anything, 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 okay? Sign number four. They are too much, too soon, and they share too much. And expect the same from you. They portray vulnerability and sensitivity, but it is a ruse. The charade is intended to make you feel special for being let into their inner circle, into their inner world. But it is also intended for you to feel sorry for them and also to feel responsible for their emotions. Sign number five, cinco. They make sure that you speak first. They like to ask probing questions to see where your mind is at and where your thoughts are early on so that they can use your answers to manipulate your decisions. They have a hidden agenda and they use your answers to get what they want. Now let's see what scripture has to say about this, okay? Book 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 14. But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty 
For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving, good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Avoid such people. So basically the Lord says, pray and send them on their way. But on a serious note, it is important to recognize and be aware of abuse in order to avoid becoming a victim of abuse or to empower a victim of abuse. It is important to observe objectively in conversations and in interactions in order to see if there are red flags or green flags. It is a learning process. Seek God's wisdom and discernment, which can come in many forms, however God may see that you need it, whether it be in therapy, books, or in people's testimonies, etc. Seek God's wisdom and discernment. God is so good and his word educates us on what is love, what is loving, happy, healthy relationships. And it comes from book one, Corinthians chapter 13, verse four through eight. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth, okay? So, praise God. I hope that you guys found this video helpful and may the Lord bless and keep you and I will, and I shall see you in my next video. Ta-ta for now.